Imagine a car that never needs a single drop of fuel, never stops at a charging station, and yet drives endlessly. Sounds impossible, right? Well, one U.S. businessman recently took Africa's revolutionary self-charging EV for a spin, and what happened on those American roads left experts, skeptics, and even Tesla engineers stunned. This isn't just a car. It's a statement that the future of energy might not come from Silicon Valley, but from Africa. The arrival of the car in America. When the shipment arrived at the port of Los Angeles, customs offices themselves were puzzled. No charging port. No fuel tank. No exhaust pipe. Yet this sleek electric vehicle from Zimbabwe rolled off a container like any other modern EV. The businessman, whose identity was kept low-key at first, had one mission. Test this car where the world's toughest critics live. On U.S. highways. The first drive. With cameras rolling. He pressed the ignition button. The car purred to life instantly, powered by an internal RF radio frequency, energy system invented by Maxwell Chikambutso. Unlike Tesla's battery packs or Toyota's hybrids, this EV fed itself power wirelessly from the surrounding environment. The car left the dock and hit the open highway. Mile after mile, the dashboard showed a steady charge, no depletion. Journalists in chase vehicles checked their instruments again and again, expecting to catch the drop. But nothing happened. The growing crowd. As news spread across social media, more cars joined the convoy. By the time they reached downtown Los Angeles, dozens of people were filming, live streaming, and asking the same question, how is this possible? Some thought it was a hoax. Others believed it was a start of a revolution that could bankrupt the global oil industry. The industry response. Within hours, think tanks and energy analysts were drafting reports. Engineers from Tesla and Rivian reportedly sent scouts to observe. The businessman revealed that he had received several calls from investors even before the test drive had ended. But this was only the beginning. The real challenge came when he decided to take the EV beyond city roads, out into the desert highways, where extreme heat long distances and no charging infrastructure would put the car to its ultimate test. Into the desert highways. The convoy left Los Angeles behind and entered the endless stretches of Route 66. The desert sun blazed at over 100 degrees Fahrenheit, the kind of heat that usually drains EV batteries fast. Yet inside this African-built machine, the dashboard still showed full charge. The RF power system didn't just resist the heat. It thrived in it. The businessman drove with confidence, but the crew following him grew uneasy. Normally, EVs need charging stops every 200 to 300 miles. But after 400 miles of continuous driving, no drop in energy was detected. The car seemed limitless. Skeptics put to the test. To silence doubts, a group of independent engineers joined the trip. They carried thermal cameras, power monitors, and diagnostic kits. At every stop, they scanned the car, looking for hidden fuel tanks or disguised charging ports. But nothing... No external power source, no hidden tricks, only the silent hum of a system that seemed to pull invisible energy straight from the air. One engineer, visibly shaken, whispered to a reporter, If this is real, it changes everything we know about energy. A shocking overnight drive. To push the limits further, the businessman insisted on driving through the night, deep into the Arizona desert, with no gas stations or charging points for hundreds of miles. This was where ordinary EVs would fail, but the self-powered EV glided effortlessly under the stars. Coyotes crossed the roads, truck drivers honked in disbelief, and still the car showed no signs of slowing down. By sunrise, the odometer revealed something astonishing. The car had covered over 1,000 miles in a single stretch without a single stop for charging or refueling. The Breaking Point Test Reporters now demanded a full Breaking Point Test. How long could it really last? The businessman agreed. He ordered the team to keep the car running continuously, switching drivers but never shutting the system off. Cameras, drones, and GPS trackers monitored every second. Hour after hour, day after day, the car just kept moving. And with every mile, the tension grew. The endless endurance run. By the fourth day, fatigue began to set in, but not for the car. The rotating drivers were exhausted. The media crews were drained. Yet the EV itself ran with the same silent, unwavering hum. 
Its energy monitor remained locked at full capacity. The businessman leaned back in disbelief as he checked the live data feed. We've passed 5,000 miles. No EV in history has done this. Not Tesla, not Toyota, nothing. The convoy had now attracted caravans of curious drivers who follow behind, filming with their phones. Social media exploded with the hashtag. Hashtag Infinite Drive. The first global reactions. Back in Washington, D.C., energy analysts scrambled to explain what they were seeing. On CNBC, a panelist shook his head. This is impossible under our current laws of physics. Unless this car is drawing power from an unknown source, we're witnessing history. In Europe, auto manufacturers held emergency meetings. Some dismissed it as a stunt. But others quietly began sending representatives to investigate. Oil lobbyists in Texas, on the other hand, were furious, demanding to know how this African-born invention had bypassed every regulation and made it onto U.S. roads, into the mountains. To silence claims that the car could only handle flat deserts, the team drove it into the steep climbs of the Rocky Mountains. Normally, this kind of terrain drains EV batteries twice as fast. But the self-powered EV accelerated up the mountain passes with ease, overtaking trucks and traditional cars, as it were feeding on an endless supply of invisible fuel. Onlookers at gas stations along the way were stunned. One man shouted, You've been driving for days. Where's your charging stop? The businessman smiled. That's the point. We don't need one. A secret meeting. Unknown to the drivers, powerful eyes were watching. A private jet landed in Colorado carrying representatives from multiple tech and energy firms. Rumors spread that they wanted to buy the rights to the technology or bear it before it could disrupt their industries. The businessman, however, wasn't easily swayed. He had seen firsthand what this car could do, and he wasn't about to let it vanish into secrecy. But pressure was mounting, and the closer the team got to New York, the higher the stakes became. Strange encounters on the road. By the seventh day, as the convoy rolled into small towns across the Midwest, unusual encounters began happening. Black SUVs followed at a distance, always just out of sight, but close enough to keep the team uneasy. At one gas station, a man in a suit approached the businessman quietly and whispered, You don't understand the forces you're playing with. This car will disrupt trillion-dollar industries. Be careful. The businessman simply tightened his grip on the keys and walked away. The EV continued forward, unshaken. Media frenzy in Chicago. When the car entered Chicago, thousands of people lined the streets. News helicopters hovered above, broadcasting the moment live. Journalists called it the car that refuses to die. Crowds erupted in cheers as the sleek African-built machine silently rolled past gas stations, its digital dashboard glowing at 100% power. For many watching, it was no longer just a car. It was a symbol of independence from oil, from charging stations, from limits. Corporate pressure intensifies. Behind closed doors, major automakers convene emergency board meetings. One leaked email from an oil executive read, If this technology goes mainstream, the global energy market collapses overnight. Offers by the invention skyrocketed. Hundreds of millions, then billions. But the businessman and Maxwell's team refused. Their vision wasn't to sell. It was to set Africa at the forefront of the next industrial revolution, the attempted shutdown. As the convoy crossed into Pennsylvania, the pressure turned darker. A sudden roadblock appeared on a quiet stretch of highway, unmarked vehicles with flashing lights. Officials claimed they needed to inspect the car for safety. The businessman... Sensing the trap, refused to hand it over. The standoff lasted hours, with TV cameras capturing every moment. Finally, under public pressure and viral live streams, the vehicles were forced to let them pass. The crowd watching online erupted. They tried to stop the unstoppable car and failed. Approaching New York, with only a day left before their planned arrival in New York City, the atmosphere was electric, millions tuned in worldwide. Commentators compared it to the moon landing, an African-born invention rewriting history on American soil. But deep in the city, powerful groups were preparing their final move. The EV had become more than a car. It was a revolution, and revolutions always attract both champions and enemies. The eve of arrival, 
the night before entering New York City. The convoy parked in a small town in New Jersey. Crowds gathered around the car, chanting, filming, and touching its sleek surface as if it were a sacred object. Inside a dimly lit diner, the businessman sat with Maxwell's representatives, maps spread across the table. They whispered about their fears. We know they'll try something. The question is, how far will they go? A storm was brewing outside, thunder rattling the windows. It was as if nature itself sensed the tension. The morning march. At sunrise, the convoy rolled out. Ahead lay Manhattan, cameras, journalists, and millions of expectant viewers watching live. Helicopters swarmed overhead, and giant billboards in Times Square flashed headlines like The African Ev that defies science approaches NYC. But trailing closely behind, those same black SUVs reappeared, joined by others. Someone didn't want this moment to happen. The attempted intercept, just before entering the Lincoln Tunnel. Traffic came to a sudden halt. Police barricades appeared, sirens blaring. A stern-faced official announced over a loudspeaker, This vehicle is unauthorized for public roads. It must be seized immediately for safety testing. The businessman stepped out, holding the car keys high. Cameras zoomed in as he declared, This car is the safest machine on earth. What you really fear is not its danger, but its freedom. The live stream chat exploded. Let it through. They're trying to steal it. History is happening right now. Under mounting public pressure, the barricade was reluctantly lifted. The convoy pushed on. The moment of arrival. As a self-powered EV emerged from the tunnel and into the streets of Manhattan, the city erupted. Crowds lined the sidewalks, waving flags of African nations. Times Square screens lit up with the words, The car that drives forever. The businessman slowed the car and parked it right in the heart of Times Square. Reporters swarmed, drones hovered above, and people cheered as though a new era had dawned. But then, something unexpected happened. From the corner of the square, a group of men in dark suits advanced, clearly not part of the media. Their intention was unmistakable. They wanted the car, and they were willing to take it by force. The standoff in Times Square... The men in dark suits pressed closer, their earpieces glinting under the neon lights. The crowd sensed danger and grew louder, chanting, Let the car live. Don't steal our future. The businessman stood firm, one hand on the EV's door, the other pointing at the cameras broadcasting live across the world. Everyone can see this, he declared. This car belongs not to governments or corporations, but to humanity. The men froze. Their mission had failed, not because of weapons, but because the entire world was watching. The revelation. Suddenly, the car itself responded. Its headlights pulsed rhythmically, like a heartbeat. Then, something astonishing happened. The vehicle projected a holographic message into the sky above Times Square. The words, glowing and immense, read, Free energy is the future. Africa shares it with the world. The crowd gasped. Some wept. Others raised their phones high to capture the moment, the turning point. That single message shattered the narrative. Overnight, headlines around the globe shifted. Globe showing Europe Africa. Africa leads the energy revolution. High-voltage self-powered EV challenges the world order. Automobile, the car that drove forever changes everything. Governments scramble to react. Some call for regulation. Others call for partnership, but the people, the people were already united. The legacy begins. The businessman handed the keys back to Maxwell Chikambutso's team. This car doesn't just drive without fuel, he said. It drives without fear. It drives us toward freedom. The camera panned across the cheering crowd, the car glowing under the lights of New York City, and the holographic words still blazing in the night sky. And with that, a new chapter of human history began, not in Silicon Valley, not in Europe, but from the hands of an African inventor who dared to dream the impossible.